what's coming from a point of view of emerging from this crap. Uh, in other words, emerging from the mind prison that we've been put into and therefore creating a reality that we'd rather have compared with the reality that we've been uh, living. And breaking the spell is actually uh, pretty much sums it up because it is a spell in many ways if you want to use that symbolism. Our minds have been locked in to a range of perception that gives us the impression that we are limited, that we um, are poor little Joe Public, I've got no power and all the rest of it. And that's exactly where um, people manipulating a mass of people um, want us to be. And when we're looking at ways out of this, uh, Einstein's quote, which is in many forms, but this is a summary of it, encapsulates what we're looking at. You cannot solve problems with the same level of consciousness that created them. Now, what we have in the world is a series of problems created, and then um, they'll change a political party or they'll move another dark suit in from somewhere else, but they're of the same level of consciousness as those who created the problem, so the problem just goes on getting compounded because we've not reached that level of uh, going beyond that and looking at it from another direction and, 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 and seeing a way to um, change what we want to change. So um, the, uh, the door is spinning round in Downing Street in the White House, but no matter what it looks like, the same level of consciousness is coming in and out, and so nothing changes. It cannot. And that consciousness is from the consciousness of division, of seeing everything as a partness and all the rest of it, which is the consciousness that's been... In, in power and uh, has been manipulated among humanity to, uh, to, to have and to manifest reality uh, from that perspective into a oneness that understands that we're all one consciousness, we're all one energy, all one mind, and therefore all these divisions between us through which we're divided and ruled are just illusions. You know, if... Uh, if someone got a baseball bat and started smacking themselves round the, round the head with it, we would call that crazy, madness, insane. But that's what we're doing with the conflict in, in Palestine, in Iraq, in Second World War. We're one consciousness that's been set at war with itself. And when I turn again, I talk about one consciousness, I'm not talking about one clone kind of uh, bland, everyone the same consciousness, absolutely the opposite of that. And, and one way of uh, seeing how, how much we've come along the road to understanding this um, idea of connection and expressing uh, the uniqueness of, of all possibility is how much we do that and how much we are clone-like, just following the one in front, sticking to the norms, never stepping out a line. Now, we become clone-like not because of oneness, we're all the same, because that's what oneness is about, but because we have disconnected from that infinity of all possibility, which we can play with and move around and get different points of observation from, and we're just playing and expressing and uh, getting uh, infinite joy from the infinite possibility that's there, and instead we've allowed ourselves to be suppressed into a fractional um, area of possibility. You know, so, so that's when we become clone-like. That's when we all act the same. That's when we become sheep. There's no contradiction between oneness and infinite variety, infinite diversity, which is what oneness is. So we can open our minds to multidimensional levels of awareness. It doesn't mean we're going to psychically bloody see everything. Oh, I've just seen someone over there, look, and all that stuff but we are accessing that level of awareness and therefore our point of observation of this reality is coming not from in this world. When you're in this world and of it, then you're buggered, really, because all you've got is this world to tell you what reality is and who you are. When you open your consciousness and, and move your point of observation, you are in this world physically, at least as a projection, but you are not of it in terms of your point of observation. And they're the people that stand out in society. 
They're the ones that people who are in this mode say, you're crazy, you're, 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 you're mad. No, no, he's different because he's got a different point of observation to you. That's all it is. We're the same but with different point of observation within infinity. There was a time when even this reality, I would say, we had this sense of oneness, this sense of connection, celebrating uniqueness and uh, joyous, joyous in diversity. But slowly, surely, maybe quicker than slowly and surely, our minds have been taken over and encased in this bubble, this disconnection from the great infinite into this body consciousness. And of course, when people come into this world now as what we call babies, and their consciousness enters this world, immediately the programming starts. Often it's parents programming children into the norms. Oh, you can't do that. What will the neighbours say? Oh, you can't do that. I want you to work in a bank. You've disappointed me. You want to go and walk in India. Well, be disappointed then. Sod off. You go and work in the bank. I'm off to India, mate. <laughs> and this kind of symbolises this picture from earlier in the war memorial in Sydney, Australia, the way we've been encased and suppressed and, and, and therefore lived this false identity, this mask that I was talking about, a false identity. We are now being offered the opportunity, for not least for reasons I'll come to, to actually break through this. And this is not literally breaking through something. It's a vibrational um, freedom. Because once we open our minds and open this, because... You know, I would say that the real Trinity, the real Trinity, ain't Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. It's left brain, right brain, heart, chakra, vortex. The center, the balance point. When these three things are working in unison, we have the balance of all possibility. We have the right brain connection um, out into the beyond we have the access of creativity, of seeing a different spin on life, of uniqueness, of, of all these things. The left brain, which is here for a reason, decodes this stuff and brings it down into a structural level that we can deal with within this reality. And this is the balance point between the two, which takes us way, way out there into realms of understanding beyond words, beyond anything that we can understand through this level. And those three things working together, decoding reality, bring balance. This would never allow this uh, to um, get involved in the stuff that we've been talking about, in control, in abuse, in war, in conflict. That's not, it wouldn't go there. If this is going to be used to function with this reality, it is on this and this terms, not on this term, on the terms of this isolated um, left brain consciousness that is isolated from the rest of um, existence, working in its own sub-world of structure and competition and all the rest of it. When these three things are working together, then we can decode reality in a way that the left brain alone could never even think about doing. And when we start to do that, when we start to open our minds, and all these phrases we use that absolutely encapsulate what we're talking about, when we open our minds and start to uh, access and decode a much wider range of frequencies, suddenly the um, reality that we create, the way we see this reality and perceive it of what it is, just expands into a, into a level of understanding that is just beyond anything we could imagine before when we're here, thinking everything's real and solid and apart and divided. And that's when the box goes on. The difference between the two is fantastic in terms of our perception of reality, and we are now in a process where this is taking place, where this box is coming off more and more people and the true nature of who we are is starting to be understood and expressed. When I started on this uh, journey uh, talking about some of this stuff, not like as much as I am now, but in the same themes, uh, it was like, you know, get me a wall, I'll give you an impression. 
And no one wanted to know. It was crazy and all the rest of it. But over the last 20 years, I've been, almost been a barometer of it. I have seen this incredible change where more and more people are expanding their consciousness and going, whoa, I can see it now. Why can I see it before? Because you weren't decoding reality in a way that you could see it. You were stuck in the box, stuck in the vibrational box where we all start out. And talking of boxes, these entities, this force that seeks to control us, is not an all-knowing, all-powerful, all-wise force. It is able to control us only by putting us in a smaller box than it is in. That's only the way it can do it. Anyone who wants control over people, anyone who is so insecure that they need control over people because there's nothing more that absolutely uh, shows blatant uh, insecurity, extreme insecurity, than wanting to control um, other people and wanting to know the outcome of everything before the game starts. That's insecurity. Secure people, they kind of, okay, oh, it turns out, it turns out, that's fine. But I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna enjoy the moment and live the moment. No, 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 insecure people, no, how's it gonna turn out? All the rest of it. And so these people um, are desperately insecure, and there's a good reason for that. The reptilian genetics, the reptilian brain, is very much about survival. Survival, 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 fear of not surviving. And because of the nature of what we're talking about, these entities have a massive fear of not surviving. Everything is not about survival. This is why they want to know the outcome of the game before the game starts. Because, oh, well, survival, survival. I, and I, there can be no um, kind of states of flux. I can't deal with states of flux when I don't know the outcome. We've got to control the outcome. Everything is control, control, left brain structure. And so they've had to control us who have the potential to be infinite possibility having an experience in this reality, which is what we are. We have to be put in a smaller box than them. And so what they're working on is intellectual knowledge, if you like, of how reality works and therefore how they can manipulate it and suppressing the knowledge of, among humans uh, of how reality works, so they are in a position of power. If I know things of great significance and other people don't, I'm in a position of power over them. That's why we've had the suppression of knowledge and the uh, passing it over through the secret society network to the chosen few. Knowledge is power, that's what it's about. But it's intellectual knowledge. It's cleverness, not wisdom, that they, they work with. They're very clever. The way they've structured society to get the outcome they want is very clever, but it isn't wise. And cleverness without wisdom is the most destructive force on earth. It's very clever to create an atomic bomb. It's not very wise to do so. They are not the same thing. And so... And so we're not dealing with an all-powerful force here. We're dealing with, with a frightened, fearful, frightened of not surviving, insecure force that needs to control to pander to its own insecurity and fear of non-survival. So when we come out of the box, as we're coming out of the box, this force ceases to have that power over us because we're no longer in a smaller box than uh, as, that it's in, in terms of knowledge and awareness. And I always use this uh, an analogy of the ball on top of the water, on top of the tank. You know when you, you go through all these different levels of how, how we are attacked mentally, emotionally and physically to suppress us and to hold us in, this, in the box, in the bubble. That tells us something about us, which people, people don't realize. Oh, it's negative. That they, no, no, it's not negative. It's extremely positive if you want to use those terms because it's telling us who we really are. The level of suppression on multi-levels, in multi-ways, that they've had to go to and continue to go to, to hold us in servitude, shows the, the, the potential and, of, of, of genius and magnificence that we really are. And that's our natural state. 
is multidimensional connection. We are in an unnatural state. We've been manipulated into it, one of disconnection of awareness of that. And if you think, take the analogy of the ball, if you push a ball, uh, or you want to put a ball in an unnatural state, i.e. on the bottom of a tank instead of at the top, its natural state, then you have to push it down and you have to hold it there. You have to hold it there because once you let go, boom, natural state. And so what they're doing is throwing all this stuff at us to symbolically hold us at the bottom of the tank in an unnatural state. What we think are norms and the way life is and the way humans are is actually anything but the norm. It's the way we've been suppressed into. It's not our true natural state, which is multidimensional connection in this world, experience it, but not of it, and awareness of being not of it while we're experiencing it. That's our natural state. And we're now uh, getting the opportunity as this um, information comes to light, and, and for other reasons I'll come to uh, in, in a second or so, or a minute or so, um, that we just need to open that telescope to open um, ourselves to a greater level of awareness and allow it to come in. You know, people say, when's the cavalry come in? Well, you know, the cavalry ain't coming because it's already here. It's in the space that we are occupying, in the space that we are experiencing now, are all those levels of consciousness which, when, when connected with, will bring us to a state of awareness and potential for creativity that we would even we would think was beyond belief at the moment. It's there. And it's not the cavalry has to come to us, it's we need to go to the cavalry because what it is, it's always there. We just need to open our minds so we can connect with its level of vibration. The idea of this crowd is to lower our vibration at the body consciousness level so that there is a disconnection vibrationally with higher states of consciousness. Because when you look at fear and uh, its sub parts like stress and guilt and all the rest of it, all this stuff they, they, they leave behind when they go into a near body state or a right brain state, left brain shut down like Jill Balty Taylor, when you rid yourself of those emotions, you start to realize, as these people have, the, the, the nature of who we are. But what, the, um, what we're looking at at the moment, this time, is the opportunity to expand our consciousness so that we vibrationally connect with the cavalry the level of consciousness, the level of awareness, the point of observation that is just there waiting for us to, con to, to connect with it. So, when you are in a state of fear and all these other sub-emotions that I talk about of fear, they are low vibrational emotions. What we talk about when we're in those states, God, I feel so heavy today, oh, I feel so dense. Yes, because the energy field, your energy field, slows down vibrationally when we get in those states, and there is a disconnection from higher states of awareness. To do with vibrations, it's to, to do with frequency connections and all the rest of it. So, it's up to us to open ourselves to these levels of consciousness, and not for those levels of consciousness to come down here to where the state we're in. Why? Because they can't. Because of the level of consciousness they're at, they're vibrating to a certain frequency. And if, we, if we're down here, never the twain shall meet. We need to go and connect with it. And it's when you open your mind and your consciousness and you start to make those connections, that's when suddenly you think, why didn't I see it before? It's, I can see it now. We're in control of this, not some bloody entities shape-shifting themselves around the sodden world. We're in control. That's the great secret they don't want us to know. Absolutely it is. So this is the level at which the change will take place. And when that takes place, our awareness changes, our level of consciousness changes. This changes because this is a projection of our level of consciousness. The projection, if we start looking out there, then we're in trouble. 
It's in here. It's when we do that that we start getting out of the box. It's a vibrational escape and a vibrational uh, getaway car caused by us changing and opening to a higher level of consciousness. Now, this is doing the rounds uh, quite a lot at the moment. The law of attraction, they call it. I've been talking about this for years um, in terms of what you put out is what you pull back. Um, but I think there are a lot more elements to it than, than, than some uh, people seem to think. When you um, are in a certain vibrational state because of your emotional, mental state, all the rest of it, you're putting out a vibration that reflects that. It's like a, mag I call it magnetic, um, a magnetic attraction basically. A vibrational magnetism I call it. And that is going to lock in to vibrational fields of like frequency and it's going to draw them towards you like a magnet. So, what you put out, you lock into and draw towards you. When people, you know, I, I've met so many people that keep attracting the same kinds of people into their lives. And I'm watching and I'm thinking, sorry now, not another one. It's like it's just the same as that last bloke and the one before him. Why? Because what's going out ain't changing, so what's coming in isn't changing. Because what we draw into us as relationships and uh, jobs and experiences and all that stuff is um, a, a reflection, a holographic reflection of us. We all live in our own little universes, really. There are points where we, we share the same basic reality, but we live in our own universes because what we're putting out is what we're drawing towards us. Um, the question is, how do we change what we're putting out? Fear. We attract to us what we most fear. When I was, when I was a kid, I was terrified of dogs when I was a kid. And when, whenever I went out, the dogs always came for me. I mean, it, it really, I mean, honestly, you got a complex. I lived on a, a, a council estate in Leicester, and it's, it's full of houses now, this place, but there was a, a green in the centre of it. And as I walked across, the, I used to get the bus, it was only one, one stop. I used to get the bus in the end to avoid going across this green, because I went across this green, the dogs came out for me. Row, row, row. My mates left them alone. And we go, hey, bloody hell, well, why am I so unlucky? Why me? I'm frightened of dogs and they come for me. You're not frightened, they're going to eat you. Why? Vibrational attraction. Same with the things we like. We can attract them. Relationships. Relationships are a vibrational attraction. We draw them in. Um, when we, um, we, we sync with people, we sync with their, uh, them energetically, you have a relationship. Then, for whatever reason, someone might change and their en energetic uh, uh, field changes, their magnetism changes or whatever, their vibrational field changes, and suddenly it's not syncing with that person anymore. In the holographic play-out world, we say that relationship has broken down and, and they've, they've, they've parted. Well, they've parted vibrationally. And sometimes, you know, that, that's good because you, 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 you get things from each other and you learn from each other and then, hey, it's time to move on and, and have other experiences. But it's the vibrational connection that draws them in. It's the same with jobs. It's the same with luck. Luck. Why are some people lucky and why are some people unlucky? Because what they're putting out is what they're drawing towards them. I watch in, in sport and football and stuff and sports people. Uh, these, these people that, um, they get so close to winning, but they never quite can win. It's almost like they're frightened of winning. And um, when I observe some of this stuff, uh, psychologically, it's almost as if they can't believe that it's possible for them to win. Oh no, that happens to other people. It doesn't happen to me. So when you get to that point where you're just about to achieve, somehow, in the holographic play-out world, you manifest something that actually stops you winning, even though it seems to be a, 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 no problem, it's going to happen. And, and, and it's what people um, call um, having a self-destruct button. Just when you're about to achieve something, uh, where's the button? Boom. Oh, something's happened, and, and it's, it's, it doesn't, it doesn't uh, achieve what looked is obviously going to happen. It's because of the, the, the energy we're putting out, which is a reflection of our mental and emotional state. And one real big energetic 
magnetic attraction of reality is intent, I've found. Intent. An intent. This is what I, uh, I'm going to achieve. This is what I'm going to do. This is what I want to do. This is what I will do. When that intent goes out, it goes out as a vibrational field and it draws back towards us all that we need to achieve that intent every time. The thing is, at this point, it breaks down with so many people because what they need to um, experience to achieve the intent they say they want is not something they'd like to experience. So I'll bugger that for a game of soldiers, I'm not having that, I don't want it that badly. And when we start to, to transform, um, things start to um, change in our energy field. And um, when that happens, things that we were drawing towards us in the old energetic state um, are not the, making a vibrational synchronization anymore. And so, in the, again, in the holographic play-out world, relationships break down, or you lose your job, or you, uh, you move home, or something happens. Your life changes in the play-out world of the projected holographic reality because what's projecting it has changed. And so, when we put out an intent, this is what I want to do, I want to expand my mind, I want to open my mind, I want to connect the true magnitude of who I am, there are things that come towards you that you don't um, often like very much, but it's necessary to break down those structures within us so that um, that intent can be fulfilled. There's this this um, DVD that's been going around for a little while now called The Secret, which is based on the uh, law of attraction. Um, and, you know, I think the principle, there's a lot to be said for it, but I, I do think it can be very um, uh, simplistic sometimes, this stuff about law of attraction. The idea that if you keep visualizing a Ferrari, that somehow you're going to have a Ferrari, and you know, and you put Ferraris all around your house, you know, I'm visualizing, I'm going to get a Ferrari. Um, well, the thing is, maybe you will get a Ferrari. Good luck to you. Don't see um, myself anything in them, but that's just me. But if your journey what you've come to experience and what you've come to do um, does not sync with having a Ferrari, then you can wallpaper your bloody house with Ferraris. It ain't going to happen. Uh, it ain't as simple as visualize a Ferrari, law of attraction, broom, 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 here I go. It's the totality of the energy field that we create that draws in our um, attracted reality. One part of that is the, the range of energies or vibrations and frequencies that we are accessing. The more expanded that is, the, the larger our state of awareness, the more our energy field in embodiment is uh, affected by that, that affects what goes out, affects what comes in. What our energy field contains from all these different um, uh, influences together makes the magnetic connection which we draw into us. The um, astrological um, influences our own energy field also um, uh, affect the overall mix of the vibrational field that we are projecting. Because as I said earlier, when you're born at a certain time, the energy um, nature of uh, you and where you're born is affected by where the planets are, so you're going to have a, a slightly different or sometimes significantly different energy field influenced by uh, the planetary and uh, uh, star influences than um, someone born at a different time. And then there's also the journey. We come in with a certain amount of coding that takes us through a journey and sometimes maybe a challenge that um, uh, we uh, will then follow without realizing we're following it. And so when I look at my life, there are many times when I've said that. Why me? What have I done? I, remember in the early 90s, I'm thinking, I only want to kind of be spiritual like, and I get all this shite thrown at me. You know, and it's like, why me? Oh my God, what have I done? I'm only trying to do some bloody help. Come on, what's going on? And then I look back and I see those nightmare experiences 
as my greatest gift. My greatest gift. We, we are often offered our greatest gifts magnificently disguised as our worst nightmares. Because we are what we are at this point, not despite what has happened to us, nice and not so nice and all in between, but because of what has happened to us, that's what's brought us to this state. And there was a, there was a time in my life, like everyone else's life, when I was, a, um, uh, shall we say, aware of how people saw me. You know, as you do when you're a teenager and then you grow up, you're uh, even older, you're, you're always saying, you know, how people see me and you're on the telly, and, you know, oh, I like, hope oh, people like me and all that stuff. And you are, in, in other words, you are, um, you are uh, looking for external approval because that helps your insecurity. When I went through the extraordinary levels of ridicule that I went through in this country, in the 1990s particularly, it was a nightmare. I couldn't go down um, any place in Britain without being laughed at, ridiculed, all that stuff. And yet, what it did was clear me completely, or as much as I'm aware of, of that um, need for approval. Of that, here we go. Fear of what other people think of me. That's what it did. So, so many of the why me's, um, we really ought to ask. Why me? Why does it all happen to me? Great question. Why does it always happen to you? Because it's here that the power is. When we realize this is where the, the, the projection's coming from, then if we change this, the projection, the holographic physical experience, must change in line with the change in the projection, and therefore our life changes. But it don't change out there, it changes in here. And, and my experience of life now allows me to continue to take ridicule and abuse and all that stuff, but I don't give a damn anymore. I don't give a damn. It's changed my reality. There's a lot to be spoken uh, uh, for about worst nightmares because so often they are our greatest gifts. Not always, but so often. And moving to another level of consciousness is, is moving our point of observation from within this uh, holographic reality, um, this physical reality, this, this suppressed reality, into that level of reality that people experience in out-of-body experiences. From that perspective, this world looks totally different. If we can move our point of observation of this reality while we're still in it, then everything changes. Because the level of consciousness changes and therefore the problems we wish to change and the things we don't like in this reality can change because the level of consciousness is higher than those that created the, 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 um, the problems. So it's moving our point of observation to another level and then everything changes here. It can't otherwise. And it's interesting, when you look at these things, the astrological influences, the, um, the level or, or, or range of frequencies that we are accessing, which we call awareness, um, the, the, the energy fields that, that, that we have, the auric field which then attracts to it what it's putting out, the life journey, the why me uh, stuff, all of them have one thing in common. They all come from within. Not out there, there is no out there. It all come from within. What the manipulators want us to do, and constantly uh, encourage us to do, is to look out there. As um, Gandhi said, you must be the change you want to see in the world. You must be, because you are the world, your world, and together, the world. And therefore, when we change, the world changes. If we don't change, the world can't change, because the world is us and we are the world. What, 
what the manipulators want us to do is look out there. And one level is looking for someone to blame all the time when things go wrong in our lives. And I understand that. It's, it seems like that sometimes. You're to blame, you're responsible, and what's that doing? It's saying, you have my power, you have my power, you have my power, because I haven't got control over my life, you have, because you're to blame, therefore you must have power over me. (laughs) Giving power away, we do it all the time. When we go, hold on a second, how have I created this situation, how can I uncreate it? Now, where's the power gone? Thank you, I'll have it back. You're not to blame, I'm not even to blame. But I'm just using my knowledge now to change the reality I don't like, because I have the power, because I'm creating it. Therefore, you don't have power over my life, I have power over my life. Thank you very much. Completely different point of observation. Now I'll change my life, because you're not in control of it, I am. Luck. Luck. Luck, oh, I'm so unlucky. Why? Put it out, bring it back. You know, I, I, I observe so many people, bloody hell, I've observed me, observed me bloody self through my life. When you see the same recurring thing, oh, I'm so unlucky, oh yeah. Why? Why? Power back, I'm in control. So, when we look out there, and this is what we're encouraged to do, it's like looking at a movie screen, because you don't like the movie, i.e. your experienced reality, and starting to shout at the computer screen, or at the movie screen. Oh yeah, I don't like this movie! Change it, change it! You're mad, mate! It's a bloody movie, it's a projection, you can't change it by shouting at it! It's your fault! The projection is back there, or behind there in this case, that's where it's coming from. So if you want to change the movie, mate, go and find the projector and then this must change. You ain't going to change the movie by shouting at the sodding screen. But what do we do? Every day we shout at the sodding screen. Because we don't go to the projector, which is projecting it. Why? Because it's much easier to think it's someone else's fault. We talk about, you know, people controlling and stuff like that. A few people can't control billions unless billions allow themselves to be controlled. Responsibility, let's take it back here. We're holograms, projections, whole world's a projection. It's us that are projecting it. It's a situation I call combing the mirror. If you, um, if you want to comb your hair, you don't comb the mirror. Because it don't affect your bloody hair, because it's a reflection. If you want to, if you want to um, change your hair, you comb your hair and the mirror then reflects it. This physical reality is a mirror. And we're combing the mirror all the time. And then we say, my hair's not changing, I'm combing that mirror. This experienced physical reality is merely a reflection of that. We have the power. We just need to take it back from this level of division, apartness, can'tness, to isness, I amness. I am all that is, ever has been, and ever will be ness. What a transformation that will make of this reality. And a part of this on a holographic level or energetic level is moving into the right brain. Not moving out of the left brain and boarding over the doors. We need that to function in this reality. But having this serve the higher reality instead of being the governor, dictating reality. And to do that, we need to start being at peace with this terrible crime of being different. If you don't want to be different, or you're not happy with expressing yourself as a unique expression of all that is, a unique point of observation within um, the infinite mind, then stay out of the right brain. And, And don't even think about transformation, because that part of us that wants not to express that uniqueness lives in there. 
God doesn't want uniqueness, he wants structure, conformity, rules. I like rules, I do, I love them. This wants to express uniqueness. This is me, I am me, I am free. I am a different uh, expression of all that is. So are you, pleased to meet you. What do we say? Who are you? Oh, I'm a coal miner. Oh, I'm a journalist. Oh, I'm a 70-year-old person from Essex. No, that's what you're experiencing. Wouldn't it be great? Hello, nice to meet you. Who are you? I'm um, all that is having an experience. Oh, so am I. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. How are you doing? All right. That's what we are. So it's starting to let go this fear of being different, this fear of being different to the norm. Oh, what will my mother say? Or what will the mates at work say? Or what if I do? Well, I tell you what, this is my view, just my view, okay? If they, mother, father, family, people at work, blokes down the pub, can't respect your right to express the full magnitude of who you are, Sodom, mate! What's... Sodom! Bloody hell, all the, uh, my friends, they, they try to make me conform, they're ever so good. Oh, really? And all this is blood stick in the water. No! No! Their families and, and parents and children and all that stuff, they can, they can have great connections and, and, and have a wonderful relationship. But just because they're parents and children and, and, and sisters and brothers doesn't mean they necessarily uh, do that. What we call brothers and sisters and all this stuff, they're holographic um, uh, projections. That's what they are on this level. We are consciousness. They are consciousness. We're all cut one consciousness. It doesn't mean that, that one consciousness is more special or, or, or in relationship to another one. And so we have to conform to that one thinks because they're our parents. So that, respect me, respect you, everyone's a winner. Tell me to live the life you want me to lead, to lead uh, on your bike, darling. This is, this is, this is what it takes to, to move out of suppression into freedom. And you're not kind of being horrible about it and saying, oh, you know, horrible and that, that business. You're saying, if you can't uh, respect my right to be who I am, then you're just going to have to move aside because I am going to be who I am, whether you like it or not. You can respect it or you cannot respect it, support it or not respect it, but it's happening because this is me. And it's, you know, it's amazing when you actually take these situations on, how other people around you actually do start to, to come towards you and say, OK, I see it. And if they don't, well, they don't, fair enough. I'll see you on another dimension. We'll talk about it. No problem. We'll have one of them vibrational beers. <laughs> Free your mind. Free your mind. I found this. I only found this this morning. I only put these things together finally this morning. Funny, funny enough, I'll just keep getting ideas in my head. Um, and I found this one. Stop making excuses. That's absolutely um, a brilliant point.